So the governor has just signed a new bill into law that requires all public school coaches to be certified in CPR, first aid, and the use of an AED. Jerry Stevens is the supervisor of sports medicine for the Duval County Public Schools and is joining us in studio this morning to really explain what this new law means for local students and athletes around the state and also the important questions, Jerry, that parents need to be asking also of their child's coach. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank so you. as it turns out, this new law, honestly, Duval County is really ahead of the game because this has been something that coaches have been required to do then for some time. Would you explain? So uh, all coaches have to be certified in order to have the right credentials to coach. And uh, Duval County Public Schools has had this CPR AED first aid training as part of that for a number of years. So it's in addition to whatever specialization a coach may have with uh, particular sport on how to coach those things, the educational requirement. And this is the first aid and safety requirement that we've utilized here in this county. Okay, so, and, and now you're obviously uh, specifically familiar with Duval County. Uh, when it For parents who are watching who maybe have a child who lives in a different county, um, I don't want to put you on the spot in terms of that, but the reality is, is that that is a question that you should be asking, no doubt, your child's teacher, I mean, to make sure that, or, or coach, to make sure that they know AED and also how to perform CPR. Exactly, because, you know, again, a lot of times parents are more interested in how their coaches can coach their kids to be better, but this is a definite component, a safety component that needs to be there. So I can't speak for the county, you know, the statewide, but uh, this is something I think will really help make sure all counties at least have someone working with the kids that have some training. Now, this new law does not apply to volunteer coaches or anyone mm -hmm. who is not a public school employee right. in in the state of Florida, which means the parents of athletes who play AAU, uh, travel teams, there are important questions that you need to be asking your child's coach. And I'm going to explain to you why this is important in just a minute, but these questions are important because at the end of the day, nobody ever thinks that the worst thing is going to happen. You right. never think that bad things are going to happen, but you need to be prepared for worst case scenario. And sometimes, as you mentioned, coaches are just thinking about winning that game right. and making sure they've got their plays all set up and not necessarily thinking about an emergency plan. Would you explain what should be in an emergency plan that every coach should have or facility where a, a, a child is going to play? Correct. So um, every, every program, you know, we, we're focused on sports and youth activities right now, but, you know, uh, every school already has an emergency action plan. They do fire drills. They do uh, you know, active shooter drills. So we implement emergency action plans that are venue specific for our um, our athletic Events, program, yeah. sure. So what's involved with that is, is that you have someone that's designated as a leader. Who's going to initiate that? And when you have coaches that are trained in CPR and first aid, they may take the lead. And then they're going to designate through that plan who's going to open the gates for JFRD or the EMS service that's going to come, who's going to, uh, you know, call 911, who's going to assist with this or that. And it's very scripted and it should be practiced. And so um, that's all that and having that AED, knowing where it is, who's going to go get it, um, is all part of that process. Well, because if you don't administer an AED in what the first three or four minutes, you, the chances of survival for that student are right. not for as anyone. good as they should be yes. for anyone. For every minute you delay, it drops a significant percentage as far as the success of that recovery for that particular person. So I want to show um, our viewers three pictures because I think that there is an, a tendency to think that cardiac arrest only happens in older people. Last August, this 17-year-old football player collapsed in Miami during preseason. He had a seizure, which caused him to go into cardiac arrest, and AED got his heart beating again. And I interviewed Sean Seema three years ago about his 16-year-old daughter, Lexi, who was running on a treadmill and collapsed. CPR and an AED saved her life. And we also know, I'll never forget my meeting, in fact, this young man's mother, Zachary Martin, he had a heat stroke and died after he collapsed during a preseason practice six years ago in Central Florida. The Zachary Martin law went into effect last year, mandating, among other things, that AEDs be on campuses, they be visible, and you know where they are. 
I, I don't, I, I, I never like to scare our parents, but at the end of the day, the reality is, is that you love your child the most, right? And so you want to do everything you can to protect them. And the reality is, is this is going to protect them. God forbid something should happen to them. Jerry, would you show us, because I think people get intimidated. They see this, I'm like, I'm not sure how to work it. Would you show us how easy it is to, to use an AED? Sure. So these are, these are two trainers. They're not real AEDs, but they're made by the same company, different generations. I want to show you that they look different, but they do exactly the same thing. So all you have to do, they're, they're automated, automated external defibrillators. Once you do that, it tells you what to do. It's gonna, uh, this will take a little minute to calibrate, but you pull the pads out and, and it And it will... speaks to you and tells you this. And, and, and I just- package and remove pads. So you Get remove the package. And, and we remove, remove pads. pads. Okay. And then it even shows you where, where you need to place pads the pads on the Peel chest, one pad okay? From and it, that's what you do. You so just it follow it, walks you through it. Peel and and I think that it's also important liner. to note that if uh, you, you don't necessarily know why Peel someone has collapsed, this, yeah, you can go ahead. This will not, you know, emit any kind right. of charge right. if it's not needed. Right. You can't hurt someone by using this if they're not having a cardiac event, correct? Correct, it will not shock the, now these two models here, if a shock is initiated, It'll tell you to, to clear, and it will initiate the shock. There are other models out there from other manufacturers where you have to actually push a button to initiate the shock, but it tells you to do that. But until it reads that there's no heart, heart signal, signal at all, it's not going to do anything, but it'll tell you to continue CPR. So there's never any harm in yeah. using it. Jerry, no, it's not going to hurt you. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate, appreciate you. appreciate the opportunity. And we're, we're certainly fortunate that we have this law now in effect that's going to make sure that our, um, our, our coaches are better equipped and better trained in worst case scenarios should something happen to your student athlete.